Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Be Making Joy and welcome to my channel. This is episode 27 of What Brings Me Joy, a mostly knitting podcast from my home here in Calgary, Alberta, about every second week to share with you the things that I cast on so you can hold me accountable for finishing them. Uh, today I am recording on Tuesday, January 30th. This should be ready for your viewing tomorrow if all goes well. Um, in this episode, I do not have any finished objects, but I've made a lot of progress and I've accomplished a lot in the last two weeks. And I have a couple of acquisitions. So before I get into my knitting, I want to give you a quick up life update. If you're just here for the show and tell, you can skip ahead using the chapter stamps along the bottom to whichever project you're interested in looking at. A health update. My foot's healing pretty nicely. Um, I stopped wearing the cast. Um, right before our trip to Fernie, I stopped wearing the cast. Before that, I was wearing it only when I left the house because I couldn't get a shoe on. I had to do some desensitization exercises so that scar area would stop burning when anything touched it. For those who don't know, I broke the metatorsal bone in the top of my foot and uh, I dropped a stone baking tray on it, it punctured the skin, and it broke the metatorsal bone. So, yeah, I had to do the desensitizing exercises. Now, that's good, but um, I'm still using the cane when I go out in uneven terrain or in a crowded place because if I sidestep, I have, haven't got the strength side to side on the foot. So, I'm doing physio, working on that. Uh, it's going well, and I'm happy with that. So, <clears throat> so what have I been up to? Uh, the last episode was early on in our ski trip to Fernie, BC, and because of the extreme cold, the ski hill was closed for the first three days. But then Dan and our middle daughter did get two more days of skiing in before she had to go back to Edmonton. And then Dan and I stayed two more days. And it snowed a lot, and it was beautiful. And then, of course, as it was time to leave, the weather came out just perfect. <laughs> Of course, I don't ski, but I got a lot of knitting done. And then the last two Saturdays, my husband and I went to the hockey game. Dan's father was a season ticket holder for the Calgary Flames since about their beginnings in the 1880s. 1980s. <laughs> 1980. And then when he was unable to attend anymore, we took over buying those tickets. Um, now Dan shares them with a friend, but we do get to go to a lot of games. And this year I began taking my knitting with me when we go. Um, I'll use a small, simple project. What I've been calling my purse project. And here's the purse I take. Security rules at the Saddle Dome are that a purse should not exceed 12 inches by 12 inches by six inches. And they do check all bags. Um, so they shine a flashlight in there, take a quick peek and let me go. Well, I'm not quite sure what they think they're seeing in there, but I've been taking my knitting. Uh, Saturday the 20th was the Battle of Alberta, Calgary versus Edmonton, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, Edmonton is only a three hour drive north of Calgary, and so the a lot of their fans came down for the game so i would guess about 40 percent of the audience was wearing oilers jerseys whereas usually the arena is usually a sea of red because the calgary flames jerseys are red i don't actually wear a flames jersey because as one of jehovah's witnesses i try to stay neutral but i do have a red turtleneck with penguins skating all over it that that's what i usually wear to the game um, yeah, so that was a fun game, the cheering back and forth between the two two um, fan groups was amazing. And you don't get that with any of the other teams that we play against because they can't bring their fans to the game, it's too far. Um, and then the next Saturday, the 27th, Calgary played the Chicago Blackhawks. So they lost against Edmonton and they won against Blackhawks. I have no idea where that puts them in the standings. I don't really pay attention to the stats, but uh, I just enjoy the game and knit. <laughs> I choose a 
simple project that I can nip by feel and not have to take my eyes off the game for those events. <clears throat> also on this Saturday, my youngest daughter took me with her to an ice cream making class. It was a gift to her from her oldest daughter, but I, the oldest daughter, I believe, was working and couldn't come with her, so she took me with her. It was at Made by Marcus, which is a local ice cream shop that makes their own small batch ice cream, and the class was conducted by Marcus himself. Um, I use the word class kind of loosely because we can't replicate what we learned at home. Um, he told us his story and he showed us how his machines worked. And then he gave us each four pints of basic bear ice cream for us to add our own flavors to. He did teach us a bit about how to choose ingredients to balance the sweet and the salty and the acidic and how if you don't properly balance the fats that will separate in the machine. Um, yeah, I added coffee, cocoa and caramel to mine. I called it CCC. <laughs> My daughter added peanut butter and chocolate brownies, I think it was. They were really good. Um, I learned something. <laughs> I learned that Briar's ice cream, the kind that I usually buy, is 200% air. There's always some air blended into the ice cream. I forget what he said that does to it. But 200% is more than what would be allowed in the U.S., but Canada doesn't have those rules. Um, apparently, if you're comparing brands, the heavier the container probably has better quality because it probably has less air. And I was surprised at that because I've been buying the Briars because it has less calories and less um, sugar content, whatever, on the label. But there's no calories in air, <laughs> so that's deceiving. <laughs> The one regulation that Canada does have is that um, it has to be 10% of it has to be cream in order to be called ice cream. So there's no such thing as vegan ice cream in Canada. It needs to be labeled frozen dessert. Interesting bit of trivia, <laughs> but this is a knitting podcast. So let's get on with the knitting. <laughs> um, my big accomplishment last week was that I submitted my assignments for module two of the Professional Knitwear Designer Certification by the Knitting Guild Association of America. This certification program is a three-part program where you have a year to complete each module. And I'll tell you, I stalled so many times this year. I delayed getting back to it because I thought I had so much time. And then all of a sudden in December, I realized I better get it done. And I think I got it finished just in time. <laughs> The instructor has already reviewed my work and let me know which parts that I need to correct. And uh, it's only a few things, so I need to redo it and resubmit it. Um, this is not a course where you get a percentage mark. You um, you have to redo every part that they think you need more work on and until that they think you know the material perfectly. And which I think that's great because you can't just float by. You have to actually learn it. <laughs> Um, for module two, in addition to answering a bunch of questions, I had to make a, um, I had to, we had to submit two patterns, not actually knit them, but write them as if we were submitting them to a, a magazine. <clears throat> the one that I wrote was for a cushion cover. Here's my drawing of it. That's Peggy's Cove. For that pattern, I just have to make a few edits to the pattern, mostly just in the wording to make it more concise and to make it comply with the style guide. Because when you're submitting to a magazine, you can't just write it however you want. You have to follow their style guide. So I need to fix some things on that. And the second pattern that I submitted was for a maple leaf sweater. Here's my drawing on that. Now I have to redo this part because they want the drawing on a person, on a figure. And I don't like drawing. <laughs> For this, I used Inkscape to do the schematic. And then I printed out the big basic sweater sheet shape. And then I hand drew those silly little maple leaves on it. Can you tell they're maple leaves? They're supposed to be maple leaves. <laughs> My graph i did the graph myself uh created the maple leaf motif myself 
Um, yeah, how am I going to add a person to this schematic, to this drawing? I have... I have a few different books that are... You can't see them. <laughs> Sketches of figures. Yeah, you can't see any of them from the screen. Of croquis. I have a light pad that I can put under it and draw and trace and whatnot. I guess I'll figure something out, but I hate drawing. But I have to do that. I have to make the drawing so that the hemline of the sweater hits the hips in just the right way. I wish I could just, you know, shrink this picture and put it on top of a croquis and put it on my light pad and just trace the whole thing. But there are no mannequins with their arms straight out like that. <laughs> so I have to redo that and a few other little things with the pattern. Um, I had to grade it for nine sizes. So there is a correction I do have to make on that graph. Things that a tech editor would have caught for me if I was submitting the pattern for my own design. But yeah, I'm, overall I'm quite pleased with it and uh, I'll very shortly get back to fixing that and resubmitting it. But while that was submitted and while I was waiting for the return of her, her return feedback, I turned my attention back to my stadium sit upon design. <clears throat> Some of you may have seen this before. Um, it was a design I began a year and a half ago using hat trick yarn. Um, it was this yarn originally dyed by Angel Arts Yarns exclusively for River City Yarns in Edmonton. Now that store has closed down. Now Ancient Arts is dyeing the yarn, selling it themselves. And Caroline, have, with her encouragement, I put out a test call for these. I have a hockey version, the football version. I've also done oh, uh, a soccer version, a baseball version. It's not quite complete. And I have the graph complete for a basketball version, but I don't know if I'll be knitting that one myself because I can't even decide what colors to use. I have no idea of any basketball teams. Um, so <clears throat> I have a testing call put out for this. I'll, I'll link in the description box below to that testing call if you are interested in testing or if you're just interested in finding out more information about it, go check uh, th out that link. I use yarnpond.com to run my test on, which even though I pay to run the tests, you as a knitter don't have to pay for this service. Um, so yeah, so I have instructions for a 14 inch pillow, a 16 inch pillow, an 18 inch pillow. Uh, you can just close it up as a pillow or I have a carry strap. I have an optional snap closure. Or I'm going to put a zipper in this one. Um, yeah, they are using Hattrick or Sock Needle from Ancient Arts Yarns or a similar yarn. A fingering weight 80% superwash fine merino 20% nylon is what I used to design the, the pattern with. And you'll find my yard adjustments in the testing application. Um, I used a 3.5 millimeter needle. Um, you'll find the gauge estimates in the pattern, in the form. Um, yeah, my expectations from a test knitter would be for you to knit the pattern as I've written it. Give me any feedback about how clear my instructions are. To try to confirm my yardy estimates and provide me with some pictures. Uh, it's an easy pattern, in my opinion. Um, I classify it as easy. It's in Tarsha. The center square is in Tarsha, and then the stitches are picked up around the square. 
and knit in the round to make the right size. Um, it's done in pieces, two pieces, and then this strip is a separate piece and it's seamed together. So easy. Um, my testing application is open now. Um, the due date I estimate is March the 25th. That could be adjustable as uh, we see how things go. Um, yeah, and I'm sending it off to the tech editor at the same time. That's that. Now, um, the other things I've been working on is one is the Melody sweater, which here it is. <clears throat> A Melody sweater knit along. I'm participating in this knit along. It's hosted by Irina Shar of the YouTube channel Fiber Chats. The pattern is by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto. It's a bottom up in the round, that trim detail that's on the bottom. Oh, I, I love that texture. It will be replicated in the yoke. So the body's done. I've got the first sleeve almost done. And I did set it aside and start the second sleeve so that I would have my first project for the game. I stalled, set this one aside. I'm waiting to figure out how long I want to make the sleeve. So, oops, I've got the stitch markers all up the middle, marking my increase rows. So, yeah, I'm trying to decide how long I want it. It's really slim. I'm thinking I might go with just bracelet length, right, just below the watch. So I do have, oh, maybe an inch or two left on this. Maybe just an inch. Because I've been slowly working away on it while I sit here doing things. Yeah. When um, the other sleeve gets close to this length, I'll uh, put on a camisole and try them on and see see what I think. It's, uh, yeah, so it's all been stock stocking at recently. I know as soon as I joined them all for the yoke and we're replicating this design in the yoke, that's going to go really fast for me because it will really hold my attention. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles on this. I've been using 3.5 millimeters on a lot of things recently. Um, the yarn I'm using is Lion Brand Touch of Merino. It's a DK weight. Um, this is 90% acrylic, 10% merino. So it's kind of soft. Yeah, I think that's going to be good against the skin. I'm looking forward to wearing it with a skirt. Because I think it's going to be nice and classy. The, okay. the other thing that I've been working on is my snowflake design for a circular throw, which I need to go fetch. So my own design for a circular throw worked from the center outward. I told you last week about last episode about the saga of how I wanted a six pointed snowflake instead of the usual eight pointed ones we usually find in knitted motifs because scientifically snowflakes have six points. Um, so I managed to graph one out and here it is on the actual yarn that I'm going to use. This is for the winter fade set, the enchanted winter fade set from Ginger Snap Fat. There it is hanging on my, there it is right there, hanging on my the doors. I'll pop a picture up of the fade in the video here. Uh, it's I did a daily yarn opening in December of this 12 day set. Uh, their fingering weight uh, by Ginger Snap That out of Calgary on their lush fingering weight base 244 yards per 50 grams gains so 1250 grams gains 
It's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And as I progress through the colors, I'll add more snowflakes. Um, I'm wondering if I should have put some snowflakes in this section. I've got, I think, nine more rows before the next increase round. Um, uh, I did plan to add one color each month, and I'm already behind for January, but that's because I had to take the time to design it first. I think I'm about halfway through the yarn for the first color. So I have to do some weighing. I, I weighed it after the first increase. I had used 10 grams in this first section. I gotta do some more weigh and figure out how much I'm using in this second section, make some decisions on where I'm going to change the color, where the color change is going to fall in relation to the increases. I'm using a pie increasing formula. So the next increasing section will be like 60 something rounds. This one's 30 something, 32, 64. So I gotta do some figuring out of where I'm going to change the colors and where I'm going to add the next motifs, more snowflakes. I might wind up using eight-sided eight snowflakes that already exist in the knit stitch dictionaries rather than make the more six-sided ones. We'll see. Or I might even rip back and add more snowflakes in this section. We'll see. Uh, set it aside for a little while and think about that. Um, but I will get back to it February 1st. Uh, I think it's four millimeters I'm using on this one. I think so. I didn't do a gauge watch. I just dove in and started dying, started knitting. So I will have to do gauge measurements before I print the pattern, before I publish the pattern. Anyway, that's going to be a year-long project because, as I said, my plan was to add one color each month. So we'll see how that turns out. Those are the only projects that I made any progress on this this month, not month, week, sorry, bi-weekly. <laughs> This episode, that's the only, and um, that brings my whip count up to nine projects on the needles for the record. My plans for February include finish it February again. That's a concept that I picked up two years ago from Roxanne Richardson from the podcast Rocks Rocks. And, and the concept is examining all of your UFOs, your unfinished projects finish them or frog them or make a plan for what you're going to do with all of your projects. This year, I'm going to take this concept into my sewing room where I have a pile of mending to do and I have my husband's quilt that he's been nagging me about. This is a t-shirt quilt from his all his races. You get a race when you enter most races, marathons and whatnot. So uh, he wanted me to make a quilt out of them. And I do already have the quilts, the t-shirts cut, backing put onto each section. I cut out like the words or the logo or whatever out of all the t-shirts. Now I need to create some strips to fill in between as we decide how to arrange them because they're all different sizes. So I need some strips to fill in between them. I'm gonna lay them all out on the pool table slash ping pong table we have a pool table and then on top of the pool table we have a ping pong table and then on top of that has been my sewing machine for two years <laughs> so yeah I need to get back to work on that so that's my plan for the next couple of weeks um hopefully next episode I can show you some progress there I do have some acquisitions uh, nothing fancy, but for full disclosure, I must admit that I added to my stash. So, one is two large balls given to me by a friend. She called and asked if I could use some white blanket yarn. And I was thinking she meant Bernat blanket yarn, which my daughter and I both have been using. And I thought, white? Yeah, I have some black I can combine with it and make a hound's tooth scarf or neck warmer because I have a pattern called honey don't Hound me for a neck warmer so 
I was thinking I was going to make one of those for her. But this is not what I expected. Look at the construction of this. It's almost like roving, but then there it's wrapped in a little thread. I can't even pick up the thread. I was picking it up earlier. It's like a strip of roving and then a thread wrapped all around it to contain it. So, I don't know. I've never seen this yarn before. I'm not sure if I compare it with another kind of yarn, what I will wind up doing with it. I don't know, but it's really interesting. It's called Ginormous <laughs> by Loops and Threads, which is a Michaels brand. But I don't recall ever seeing it at Michaels, so how old it is, I don't know. It's, uh, I saw, I think it's all 100% acrylic. There it is. 100% acrylic, 100 yards, 450 grams, only 100 yards. Yeah, because it's super bulky. A CYC6 number on it, super bulky. Recommended needle size of 15, no, 10 millimeters. US 15, 10 millimeters. Hand wash. Warm, do not bleach, dry flat, do not iron, do not dry clean, blah, blah, blah. Interesting stuff. So I got two giant balls of that added to my stash. Unless somebody else wants it, you're welcome to it. Now, the other acquisition was an impulse buy. And let me tell you some backstory on this. <clears throat> There is a monthly afternoon Zoom group that I join. It's called a Maker's Meetup, hosted by Yarniversity, which used to be River City Yarns. Um, and some people in the group have been talking about doing a Shetland Lace Knit Along. And the pattern is Equilibrium by A Passion for Lace. And every time they talk about it, I bring up the pattern on the, my Ravelry and look at it and think about joining but it's with gossamer thin wool, which I don't really feel like working with right now. But some suggested using a lace weight. Well, I saw this at Walmart and thought maybe I could use this. It's purple, the lavender purple. And you know, I go crazy for purple. And there was this whole shelf full of this purple. So I was attracted to it like a magnet. So I don't know if it's going to work for this Equilibrium shawl, but I don't really need any more shawls, so I'm not going to spend a lot of money on it. I'm willing to try this and see what happens. It's Aunt Lydia's Classic Crochet Thread. Um, it has a CYC number of one on it, which is the lace weight, right? No, one's a fingering weight. Does that say one? That's a cereal. Where are my eyes? <laughs> Cyril is a lace weight. So I know it won't be super soft and comfy because it's cotton, but I think it will be pretty. And of course, if you're not using the yarn weight that's recommended in the pattern, you have no idea how large the thing is going to turn out. We'll see three balls of it, 350, yards or meters per ball. Usually call it a ball because it's all on a cardboard tube. We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. We'll see if I actually get it started. I will at least get it started. It might take me a couple of years to finish it because because it's lace it's a very super fine lace i'll pop a picture of the pattern up in here so you can see how much detail is involved in this but uh i do look forward to to sitting down and spending a little bit of time on it yeah well that's uh all i have to share this episode my next episode will be february 14th roundabout and uh until then thank you for joining me Happy knitting, crocheting, embroidery, woodworking, jigsaw puzzles, what? Baking, whatever it is that you like to do, go find some joy. <laughs>